On June the 23rd of 2017, singer Egypt Covington was murdered in her Van Buren, Michigan home by three men who intended to rob her neighbor, Shane Lamar Evans, Timothy Eugene Moore, and Shandon Ray Groom were reportedly targeting illicit substances they believed to be inside. Covington's neighbor was a licensed caregiver that kept legal marijuana in his home, which was a well-known fact in the community, given that he'd spoken about it in local programs. Covington and her neighbor were friends and would often leave the door connecting their residences open. Because of that, the burglars accidentally used the interior door and entered 27-year-old Covington's section of the duplex instead. Evans, Moore and Groom knew the man would be away at an annual music festival, a yearly tradition he shared with Covington. However, in 2017, she chose not to accompany him and was gunned down during the course of the home invasion. It would take authorities three years to arrest all three suspects, using GPS location data and phone records to connect them to the crime. The men reportedly stole the victim's cell phone, which was found to have been at the exact same locations as their own phones before they discarded it. During interrogation, Evans admitted he did yard maintenance at the duplex and knew firsthand about the legal marijuana, as well as the comings and goings of both neighbors. However, he stated that although he had discussed the breaking with his two alleged co-conspirators, he'd refused to participate. Moore and Groom were charged with first-degree murder, home invasion, felony murder, and felony firearm, while Evans was only accused of the first two crimes. Number 9. Cassie Jo Stoddart Idaho high school students Brian Draper and Tori Adamchik murdered one of their classmates on September the 22nd of 2006 in an attempt to become world-famous killers. Bannock County Police determined that Draper and Adamchik had been planning the crime for weeks before actually going through with it, closely following the plot of the movie Scream. While house-sitting for her aunt and uncle, Cassie Jo Stoddart decided to invite her boyfriend, Matt Beckham, who in turn invited Draper and Adamchik to the residence. The two young men proceeded to hang out with Beckham and Stoddart for a few hours. At one point, Draper took advantage of the situation by sneaking away from the group to unlock the exterior basement door. Although he and Adamchik eventually went home, they subsequently filmed themselves, returning to Stoddart's aunt and uncle's house clad in dark clothes, gloves, and masks. They turned off the power, causing Stoddart to become frightened. Beckham, who'd been watching TV in the living room with her, asked his mother for permission to stay over and keep her company for the night, but was told to return home. He left after turning the lights back on, but the would-be killers then threw the circuit breaker a second time in an attempt to lure Stoddart into the basement. She stayed on the main floor, however, prompting Draper and Adamchik, armed with a dagger and a hunting knife, to walk upstairs and ambush her. They stabbed their victim 30 times. Her body wouldn't be discovered until two days later on September the 24th. When Adamchik was interrogated by police, he said that he was originally planning to attend a house party that night, but that he and Draper eventually decided to watch a movie. When probed further, he was unable to provide investigators with any details about the plot of the movie they'd supposedly watched. Police officers soon found knives, latex gloves, masks, and several incriminating videotapes the two killers had attempted to discard. A transcript of the tapes was shown during the trial, which featured Draper saying, just killed Cassie, we just left her house. This is not a joke. I stabbed her in the throat and I saw her lifeless body. Between April and June of 2007, Draper and Adamchik were both found guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder in separate trials and sentenced to life without parole, plus 30 years. Number 8. Jacqueline Avant 30-year-old Ariel Maynor murdered philanthropist Jacqueline Avant during a home invasion in Los Angeles on December the 1st of 2021. 81-year-old Avant was the wife of music executive and film producer Clarence Avant, who was present during the break-in but wasn't harmed. When first responders arrived at the scene, Avant was rushed to the hospital with a gunshot wound but was ultimately pronounced dead. Shortly after the murder, Maynor was arrested by police after literally shooting himself in the foot during the course of a second home invasion. While being questioned, he willingly provided the details of his recent crime spree, which included the pair of break-ins, as well as firing his gun at a security guard, who fortunately wasn't injured. Maynard was recorded during a jailhouse call to a friend in which he openly bragged about the murder, 
indicating he was proud to be featured on the news and believed he would get out of prison in 20 years. Presiding judge Catherine Solazano didn't show leniency, sentencing him to 150 years behind bars. Number 7. Braden Smith On June the 14th of 2019, an 11 year old boy from Mebane, North Carolina, defended his family home from a would be robber while waiting for his parents to return. In what was widely deemed reminiscent of the 1990 film Home Alone, Braden Smith didn't hesitate to confront Jatavian Dashwan Hall as he entered the house through a window. The boy had been speaking with his mother on the phone when the 19 year old intruder ordered him to drop the phone and go into a closet. Hall threatened Smith while holding the family's pellet gun, which the boy knew was kept unloaded. He thus decided to defend himself, grabbing a machete he'd bought with gift cards to chop down trees. The brave boy, who'd been taught how to defend himself in the event of a home invasion by his father, Christopher Smith, even scolded the robber telling him, you're better off to get a job than break it into other people's houses. Police soon arrived at the scene and after being treated for minor injuries, Hall was arrested and charged with breaking and entering, second degree kidnapping and interfering with emergency communications. Number 6. Maureen Whale On December the 5th of 2018, 76-year-old London resident Maureen Whale died from a heart attack after a home invasion. At various points over the course of her life, Whale worked as a medical secretary, nurse, librarian and air stewardess, but was enjoying her retirement when three strangers broke into her residence while she was home alone. They proceeded to terrorize the pensioner as they robbed the place. Whale called 999 after the criminals left and was taken to the hospital with chest pains. The following day, she passed away in the ER. The three robbers who pilfered jewelry, a handbag and cash were recorded by a security camera as they were breaking into the house. However, as of February of 2023, they hadn't yet been identified. A post-mortem examination determined Whale's death had been brought on by the stress of the robbery, so the men would therefore be charged with manslaughter if and when they were arrested. Number 5. Siobhan An 80-year-old Las Vegas woman identified only as Siobhan for privacy reasons was beaten, assaulted and shot by Herbert Scott Rogers on July the 1st of 2018. The 53-year-old man had broken into her home wearing nothing but a baseball cap and attempted to abuse her, then shot her. The victim told police she'd been awakened by the sound of rattling dishes. Rogers stole two bracelets, pearls and several other valuables before firing a shot at her head and leaving. The bullet didn't penetrate her skull but apparently only grazed her skin. She survived the attack and was taken to the hospital with severe bruising and lacerations after calling 911. Police were able to identify the attacker by way of a large tattoo that the victim was able to describe in detail. Rogers, who was already on the offender registry, was arrested and charged with attempted murder, assault, battery, kidnapping and robbery. Number 4. Avery Cormier Massachusetts teen Avery Cormier was home alone, babysitting her young sister, when a man broke into their Middleborough home on April the 15th of 2022. 58-year-old Joseph Ridge would come to regret breaking into Cormier's house as the young woman grabbed two steak knives to defend herself and her sister. The intruder, who was out on bond at the time of the incident, immediately fled the scene. Cormier followed the criminal outside, recording a video as he sped away in his 2010 Chevy Silverado, capturing his plate number in the process. Ridge was arrested shortly thereafter, whereupon he was charged with aggravated breaking and entering during the day, disorderly conduct and trespassing. Middleborough Police Chief Joseph Perkins praised Cormier's bravery, stating she'd assisted them in identifying the man believed to be responsible for breaking into her home. Number 3. Sean Custis On June the 21st of 2013, 45-year-old Sean Custis was caught on video, breaking into a New Jersey house and beating a young mother who was home alone with her child. The assault was captured by the nanny cam, which recorded the victim, whose identity wasn't released to the public, being violently attacked by Custis, who went so far as to throw her down a flight of stairs. During the resulting criminal trial, the suspect's attorney argued that his client had been framed by police officers because of his race. 
However, through limited footage of the attack that was released and eyewitness testimony, he was positively identified as the intruder for robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, and endangering the welfare of a child. Custis was sentenced to life in prison as well as an additional 25 years to be served concurrently. He would only be eligible for parole after serving 63 years and nine months. Today's topic was requested by Cherio Totoro, Victor Tear Hick, and Ryan Hogan. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number two, Nadine Lott. On December the 14th of 2019, trained Irish boxer Daniel Myrtle launched a brutal attack on his ex-girlfriend at her Dublin home. 30-year-old Nadine Locke was violently beaten, kicked and stabbed. During the assault, which Myrtle only stopped after she lost consciousness, a neighbor went to check on Lot after hearing loud noises and noticed the front door was open. When she entered the apartment, she witnessed Myrtle assaulting the victim like a wild animal. She contacted Lot's sister, Phoebe, who rushed to the apartment and contacted authorities. The paramedic that responded to the scene described the assault as one of the most horrendous he'd ever witnessed. Lot was rushed to the hospital where she received 42 pints of blood before succumbing to her injuries three days later on December the 17th. Following the attack, Murtaugh had crashed his car and told the passers-by who assisted him that he'd killed his partner. He was arrested after being treated for the injuries he'd sustained in the accident. During the ensuing trial, Chief State Pathologist Linda Milligan testified that Lot's body presented with 64 individual injuries. The victim also reportedly suffered multiple cardiac arrests as well as a traumatic brain injury. Murtaugh was found guilty on August 5th of 2021 and was consequently sentenced to life imprisonment. Before we move on to number one, and just in case your they will kill you itch hasn't quite been scratched yet, we have When House Sitting Goes Wrong lined up right after this. Number one, Ira Bennett and Lamar Brown. Ira Bennett and Lamar Brown, both aged 31, were shot by a teenager whose family home they attempted to break into on November the 11th of 2015. The unidentified 13-year-old boy from Charleston, South Carolina, was home alone when the two men forced their way inside. He used his mother's gun to scare the robbers away, shooting at them through the door and hitting Brown three times. A getaway driver took the injured intruder to the hospital, where he would later die from his wounds. Brown reportedly had a long history of criminal activity. His partner, who was able to escape unscathed, was arrested and charged with burglary and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. Number 8. Brandon Wilson in September of 2017, Brandon Wilson then, in his late teens, broke into a house where he once lived as a foster child in Woodbury, South Jersey. Wilson had intended to burglarize the residence but was surprised to find 26-year-old Shawnique Carter, who was house-sitting for a friend, inside. He bludgeoned her with a metal bar from a gym weight and then stabbed her to death. Wilson tried to cover his tracks by cleaning up the scene before fleeing. Carter's body was found in a second-floor bedroom by her five-year-old son and his cousin, also aged five. They then wandered to a barber shop up the street and reported what they'd seen. In the two-month-long investigation that followed, surveillance footage from another house on the street as well as physical evidence placed Wilson at the scene. He was charged while in custody at Cape May County Jail. In an unrelated case stemming from his extensive criminal record, his parents, David Wilson and Kim Ward, both in their early 50s, soon became part of the investigation as well. A shoe print was found on the premises and detectives contacted the jail asking staff to remove Wilson's footwear for inspection. The suspect reportedly called his parents from jail and asked them to get rid of two pairs of shoes from their home. When officers arrived at their Paulsboro address, they recovered two pairs of sneakers from an attic and realized that they were wet and smelled of cleaning solution. David and Kim would subsequently plead guilty to hindering a third-degree charge that could result in a maximum sentence of five years, whereas Wilson was given 54 years in prison for Carter's murder. Today's featured fan shout-out is Instagram follower Maya Scarlet 2 To appear in our next video, send us your pic, rocking the latest merch from theywillkillyou.com and send it in to us on Instagram today. Number 7. Zachary Craven in August of 2018, Washington man Zachary Craven, aged 27, was sentenced to 72 years in prison for a double homicide that had occurred several years earlier. Craven had been raised by his grandmother, Angelica Hayden, 
who'd maintained a loving relationship with him even as his life had begun spiraling out of control due to his methamphetamine addiction. She'd hoped he'd recover even after he'd committed multiple assaults against her, including one that involved killing her cat and another in which he'd bound her hands with electrical cord demanding she give him money. He was charged with assault and a no-contact order was put in place to protect Hayden. On July the 7th of 2015, Craven went to her home in Skyway and fatally shot her in the head. He then headed towards the Renton home of his ex-girlfriend, Teresa Cunningham, undoubtedly with the intention of killing her as well. However, she and her family were away and house-sitting for them was Cunningham's best friend, Megan Smith, aged 21. Craven arrived at the residence and, upon encountering Smith, demanded a piggy bank that he and Cunningham used to share. He then executed Smith as well as his ex-girlfriend's elderly dog in the kitchen. About a week before his killing spree, Craven had failed to show up for court-ordered transportation to a drug treatment clinic. Smith's family would subsequently sue the Department of Corrections for what was deemed as a poor job of monitoring him, even though he was a convicted felon and an addict with a history of mental illness. Number 6. Valerie Graves On December 30, 2013, a British woman was killed while house-sitting for friends at a waterfront property in the East Sussex village of Bosham. The owners had gone abroad for Christmas, leaving 55-year-old Valerie Graves, who lived in nearby Bracklesham Bay, to watch the home, estimated at over $2 million. Graves' body was discovered by one of her relatives in a ground-floor bedroom. She'd suffered fatal injuries after being bludgeoned with a claw hammer which was found less than half a mile from the property. Forensic analysis of DNA recovered from the scene established the killer was male, but for several years, no suspects were identified. The police launched a massive DNA voluntary screening that examined over 3,000 men before ultimately fearing that the killer might never be caught. The crucial break in the case would come from a woman living in a rural part of Romania's Transylvania region. While looking through her husband's phone, 27-year-old Claudia Sabau had found Google searches about a murder in Bosham and a media-released picture of a hammer which looked like the one he had. She confronted her husband, Christian, who asked her not to break up with him and to keep quiet about the matter. Claudia, however, contacted British authorities. Before returning to Romania, Christian and his wife had been living in a caravan at a scrapyard along the A27. In Chichester, Sabal had done odd jobs at the home where Graves was killed. On the night of her death, he'd drunk a bottle of whiskey and cycled to the address. He'd broken in, expecting to find the place empty, with the intention of stealing from a safe he'd believed to hold money and precious ingots. He found Graves inside and bludgeoned her to death, fearing she'd be able to identify him. Christian was arrested in his home country on a street that was named after Vlad the Impaler, where he'd been living with a new girlfriend and extradited to England. DNA evidence confirmed his estranged wife's early detective work, and he pleaded guilty to killing Graves in 2019. Number 5. Karen Smallwood On October the 13th of 2004, while house-sitting for her aunt and uncle in New Mexico, 19-year-old mother of one, Ursula Duran, was shot dead. Her body was discovered by her boyfriend, also the father of her child, and by her mother, who then alerted the authorities. The young woman had been shot five times, twice at close range, and there were some grey hair strands clutched in her hand, presumably belonging to her attacker. Eleven days after the murder, the aunt and uncle revealed that some items had been taken from their home, including Duran's ATM card and checkbook. The card was used at cash machines in New Mexico, Texas, and Arkansas, before a final withdrawal occurred in Louisiana. Video from one of the ATMs showed an older woman, whom the aunt and uncle would identify as Karen Smallwood, who used to house sit for them. The 59-year-old had been living at a campground at the edge of town and, after a long time of not speaking with them, had contacted the couple to ask if they needed a house sitter. They said no, adding that their niece was taking care of the home. The police found a DNA match between Smallwood and the hair strands from the scene, while recovered casings proved to be of the same type as those of a 9mm handgun in her possession. Blood found inside the said gun was positively matched to Duran's. Smallwood was consequently sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 30 years served. Number 4. Rebecca McCurdy While house-sitting at an address in Osage County, Oklahoma, a mother of two was the victim of a brutal dog attack in June of 2021. Deputies from the sheriff's office were asked to perform a wellness check at the residence just west of Skiatook. It was there that they found the lifeless body of house-sitter Rebecca McCurdy, aged 28, who'd been mauled to death 
by a pit bull. There were several caged dogs which the owner claimed to be raising for profit in the garage. One of the cages was toppled over and aside from the injuries on McCurdy's body, further evidence pointed to a dog attack. It's unclear what charges, if any, the owner would face. A GoFundMe was subsequently set up in McCurdy's name meant to offer support to her family. Number 3. Elizabeth Bischoff In May of 2019, police were called to a home in the Broadmoor neighborhood of Colorado Springs to the report of a theft. The homeowner, who chose not to disclose her identity, had had a broken arm for a few months and thus hadn't been wearing any jewelry. When she went to put on her Rolex, she realized that the watch, along with several other custom pieces, was missing. There were no signs of forced entry to indicate a break-in. The main suspect was 39-year-old Elizabeth Bischoff, a known dog and house sitter in the area, from whose services the homeowner had also benefited. Bischoff had sold $400,000 worth of jewelry to a company in Denver claiming that she'd inherited the pieces. Upon examining the diamonds, the jewelers realized that they'd been custom cut in a particular store from New York. Further communication between the two companies revealed that Bischoff's pieces had actually been stolen. She was arrested in October and still had about $200,000 worth of jewelry in her possession, which she'd stashed away at a different home where she was pet-sitting, unbeknownst to the owners. In the aftermath, Bischoff faced charges of second-degree burglary and theft. Today's topic was requested by Instagram follower n 2 b 2 b If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below or follow us on Instagram and reach out to us there. Number 2. Michael Robles and Monica Caban On July the 1st of 2020, a homeowner from Alamo Heights, Texas, called the local police department to report that her house had basically been stripped of its interior. Michael Robles and Monica Caban, both in their early 40s, were arrested and charged with theft of $150,000 to $300,000. The aptly dubbed House Sitters from Hell had been hired to watch the home while the owner was in Australia. During that time, they removed all interior doors, granite countertops from the kitchen, the oven, washer, dryer, window blinds, and even cabinets. Robles and Caban attempted to extract the windows and the air conditioning unit through a makeshift scaffold. The authorities reported that the house had been left in a dilapidated and unlivable condition after even items that were nailed down or attached to piping had been ripped from their supports. Aside from theft, Robles and Caban were also charged with three counts of drug possession with intent to sell and held at Bexar County Jail on a $25,000 bail. Number 1. Jacob Eveland on May the 31st, a man in Elmer, Washington was stabbed, shot, and burned to death by a friend who'd been freshly released from jail. 47-year-old Roy Jones had been house-sitting for Jacob Eveland while he was doing a 30-day jail stint for domestic violence assault. Jones, his grandmother, was the one who'd driven him to the house on the night. She remembered waving at Eveland, who'd been released that same day before leaving. The next morning, she turned on the news and saw the house on fire, with reports claiming that a body who she soon realized was her grandson had been found in the front yard. Evelyn had shot and stabbed Jones before setting his own house ablaze and fleeing the premises. The cause of the murder remained unclear, but Grays Harbor County Sheriff Rick Scott suspected that Evelyn had committed it because of animosity that he had towards Jones over drug usage, drug theft. Evelyn was arrested in Seattle and confessed to the killing, for which he was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Thanks for watching. Would you rather hear footsteps in another room while you're home alone or run out of gas on a road that's several miles from a gas station? Let us know in the comments section below.